Can you just demonstrate to us? Head down, straight left arm, and keep your left, your lead foot on the floor. Can you just demonstrate that? Uh, no. Right, why not? Because, uh, 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 Julian, I'm 66 years old. I've got very, very stiff shoulders. I've got um, a twisted spine up here. I've got bad elbows and a bad lower back. And if I do that, it actually hurts. It physically hurts. Yeah, but I thought we've all been told to keep our head down, arms straight. We have. Footstep. We absolutely have. And how much pain, injury is that causing to people around the world? So I used to demonstrate. Yeah. And then I realised that A, why would I want to demonstrate something I don't want people to do? Yeah. Rather than demonstrate and let them feel and see what they should be doing. Yeah. Something that's um, inspirational for me, aspirational. Uh, and I also realised I was hurting my body and I was going to shorten my career. Yeah. So I stopped doing it. So can you just demonstrate to us three things that we would encourage golfers to do? The three things we should encourage people to do is move everything together. Motion, like we were saying this early today, motion is what this is all about. Yeah. And everything moves together. And you can't move everything together with one part, for example, like my foot, which doesn't move. Yeah. So I'm now out of sync. So everything moves together. La Danse de Golf incorporates movement of the feet, arms that aren't stretched tight and tense, and my head's moving constantly with my body. So can you just strike as a, a shot? And I think what we're going to look for here is, is your head movement, what your lead arm is doing, and maybe your footwork, and just so we can see the difference between what's commonly been taught. Absolutely nutted that one. So um, I've done it all wrong, and yet I've hit the ball okay. But fabulous golf shot. And the other question I would put to you all is, how does it look? Does it look difficult? Graceful. It yeah. looks graceful. graceful oh. yeah. Thank you, Julian. That's the best well. compliment I've had for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it does, Brian. And a good golf swing should be a thing of grace, elegant, instead of it being all of that stuff. Why is yeah. tension so bad, then, Brian? Wow. Why is tension so bad? Uh, because it hurts joints. Yeah. Uh, it can hurt tendons, muscles, uh, and a little bit of tension. If I've got the club on the ground now, and I grip the club more tightly, the club edge come off the ground. Yeah, I can just see that's moved. Okay. What, so if I get tense as I'm coming into the ball because I'm trying to control it, I might top it. So you're telling us it's not your head that's lifting, it's you're tightening up. Is that what you say? Well, let's say, am I hitting the ground here? Yeah. yeah I'm brushing the grass. Yeah. Okay, so well, have a look at my says, head. Everybody says it's a head. Well, I'm looking up at the sky. I'm still hitting the ground. Okay. And I can keep my head down and miss the ground. That's what I shouldn't do, by the way. Oh, that hurts. So what, what did you do to miss the ground then, Brian? So you kept your head down, which everybody says would make you hit to the bottom of the ball, and you've you missed the ground. What did you do differently? Shan, could you put your hand down? Yeah, yeah. So if I start here, yeah. I've been taught to keep my arms straight. Yeah. So the club's a certain distance from me. Yeah. And if I come back here, the club head is closer to me than it was. Yeah. When I come back here, and if I'm trying to lag, look what happened. Oh, you're miles away. And I can move my head towards his hand and still miss his hand. You put your head down, but you shorten the club. Yes. Basically. I shorten the distance between the club and me. And so tight muscles are pretty useless? If you want to hit the ball badly, tighten your muscles. Okay, so more effort yes. is doing what? More effort is uh, limiting your muscles' ability to work effectively and efficiently. Yeah. Because we want loose elastic muscles, we don't want tight ones. And what happened? What, why are loose elastic muscles better for striking a golf ball further? Uh, because you get more speed. More speed, right. Yeah, okay. so the ball striking improves. Yeah. Because you're relaxed, you actually hit the ball where it is, yeah. and you don't top it and miss it. Uh, and one of the great benefits of this is older people can play 18 holes and come off the course without feeling absolutely shattered, yeah. physically, less tired. So, uh, and that actually also allows them to play golf until they're a lot older than they would have done with a tense, tight, stiff. So you're saying that the three things that are commonly taught, head down, arm straight, lead foot, are really hurting senior golfers? 
Oh, no, I, all golfers. All golfers, Particularly yeah. senior golfers. Yeah, okay. The younger player can do it and get away with it, but it will eventually hurt himself and hurt his golf. Yeah. Senior golfers, unless they're very supple and they're doing yoga all the time, most senior golfers, we get stiffer as we get older. Yeah. I mean, the common thing that we hear is, I get to hole 15, 16, I'm absolutely shattered. Yeah. So, are you saying that carrying this amount of tension around 14, 15 holes is going to tie you out? Yeah, okay, so a little demonstration. I would suggest and folks at home do this. Hold a golf club, grip it very tightly, and lock your arms very tight. And now tell me how long you can stand there without your muscles getting tired. I'm not swinging a club, I'm just tensing up. My muscles are working overtime now. Yeah. And if, if I stay here for very long, they'll cramp. Right. So you can play golf like that if you like, or you can play golf relaxed. I used to get blisters on my hands because of how tight I used to grip it. Yeah. And I've softened my grip and I haven't had a blister since. And funny enough, there's quite a few pros out there who are quite boastful about having sore hands and calluses yeah. all over them. They're showing them off thinking that's yeah. a good thing. As a youngster, I developed the calluses quite quickly because yeah. I loved hitting golf balls. And you say I was proud. I couldn't grip a club because it's too painful. Yeah. But I was proud because I was sticking yeah. to the rule. Um, something that I've noticed, you know, I don't really need a glove anymore. I used to think I had to wear a glove all the time. Now I'm quite happy in golf shots without a glove. When I played the tour, because you've got to practice a lot, and I had to practice with two gloves on, and with plasters around the hand, then to the two gloves, yeah. and I'd practice and I'd still play the tournament with my hands hurting. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah. if you're going to offer Two or three pieces of advice to people who are just watching this. What, what, what advice are you going to give us, Frank? Um, I would say reflect on the rules that you're playing to. Uh, decide whether those rules are helping you. Is the evidence that it, it, these things have helped me play good golf? I enjoy it. I love my golf swing. It feels comfortable, elegant, graceful, balanced, all of them. What do you think a golf swing should look like? But if it doesn't, then I would say question those rules. Yeah. And uh, break them? Yes. And try breaking them. Try breaking them. Yeah. The only thing that I've done over the years is I've, I've tried to break the rules and see what happens. So you question the rules? Yes. And as I've got more relaxed and I've moved more, wow, I start hitting shots I've never hit before. So don't get stuck in a rut of the rules that you've been led to believe, that you've been indoctrinated in. See what happens by trial and error if you break the rules. So the less we follow a tour player template swing, probably the better we're going to play golf. I don't see how a 68-year-old guy who's got a new hip can possibly follow a tour player template golf swing. And I think we're still compared to one. Exactly. Yeah. If you're five foot six and you're being compared to six foot four Ernie Els, I can't quite see the logic in that. I really. Am. No, no, no. Great advice. Thank you. Find your own golf swing and. Um, there's a book that one guy wrote many years ago called Positive Impact Golf and there are lots of easier swing coaches whose ethos is to help you find an easier way of playing this game. And I'd like to think that that's what we stand for, to find one of these guys and discover your true swing that's body friendly and not body damaging. Yeah, great, great advice. Thanks, Brian. Thanks,